Hello, welcome back to this week's technical. As you can see, it's far too nice a day to be filming a technical in a dingy old back room. So I'm out on a walk with Hattie. She's just walked ahead of me because she hates being on camera. I've used this opportunity to get out on a nice day like this to show you something. As you can see, I've got some pretty interesting get up on. I've got a wash on, don't worry. In the meantime, I've got my first edition. I believe it's the first edition. It might have even been a prototype, uh, the sheep game. Polo, you can see there. I'm hoping this is gonna be worth a lot of money in 10 years time as a collector's item. Uh, I've got my shorts on, not quite Canterbury shorts yet. Give me another couple of weeks and I'll have a set of them. And yes, I've used the sunny weather to really crowbar in a topic which did catch my eye, but I'm looking for a specific plant. It's a tree. I'm gonna try and find one and show it to you. I think I'm in the right place because as you can see, and by running water, it shouldn't take me long to find one. And it is also the subject of this week's technical. So let's see what we can find. Well, that didn't take very long because I was actually stood virtually underneath one as we were just talking. Um, this, this is what I was looking for. So a lot of you will be more accomplished botanists than I am, but that is a willow. I can't tell you exactly what species of willow that is. It's a very common tree. You often find it by water. Lots of different species in temperate climates like the UK and New Zealand. Basically, it relates to a paper someone sent on to me this week, and I saw the author on a podcast recently as well. Whatever we're calling it these days, regen ag, holistic ag, agroecology, these less conventional ways of looking at agriculture have always offered some useful, interesting outlook on animal health and welfare. And this study that caught my eye is uh, no exception. Lots of you will know if you farm livestock, the bread and butter of a lot of livestock pasture is a two species mix. It's perennial ryegrass and a white clover. In some ways that is a very fantastic, straightforward cocktail. If you keep it at the right growth stage, it provides such a fantastic level of energy and protein. It meets even the highest nutritional demands. That might be for a milking cow, that might be for a ewe that's carrying twins, it might be for a growing lamb. That's one of the reasons multi-species swords are starting to become more popular. We've looked at those in previous vlogs, but livestock aren't just grazers if you give them the chance. They will also browse trees and shrubs. And one such group of trees that's been looked at quite prolifically when it comes to grazing livestock is willow. Of course, willow isn't just one species, it's a whole different range of species. In the UK, you're gonna find species like weeping willow, goat willow, white willow, and I'm sure there are lots and lots and lots more depending on where in the world you are. Previous studies have shown some quite surprising effects that grazing willow has for livestock. Sometimes that's grazing directly and sometimes that's providing willow extract. So there's evidence to suggest that grazing willow can reduce the need to drench lambs for worms. That's good for anthelmintic resistance, good for cost. Can also sometimes appear to improve uh, live weight gains and reduce DAG score. Again, we talked about that on a previous technical. But this study is a bit different. It's looking at some other aspect of willow. We'll circle back to that in a second, but if you're a livestock keeper in the UK or even here in New Zealand, somewhere else in the world, you know that in lots of regions, trace elements are a big limiting factor on livestock production, whether that's fertility, on growth, and there's a whole host of those different trace elements. One of the most important ones in the UK and in New Zealand for limiting growth, especially in lambs, is cobalt. Now, cobalt is a trace element that's not used directly by the animal, but it's used by the bugs in their room, in their stomach. The bugs turn that into vitamin B12, the animal itself then uses the vitamin B12 to extract energy from forage. And so you can imagine if it's not getting enough cobalt, the rumen microbes then aren't making enough B12. And then that animal, whether it's a sheep, goat, cow, whatever we're talking about, cannot extract the energy it needs to from the forage and so fails to thrive. Because this is such a common problem, there are lots and lots and lots of supplements in lots and lots of different forms. So injections, boluses, drenches, they're often a very easy sell because they work so well. So coming back to that study, what was it about and what did they find? So they took several small groups of lambs, they allocated them to three treatments, either a control where they didn't supplement them at all, a drench where they gave them a standard proprietary mineral drench, and this third group where they fed them willow, the exact details of that are in the study, perhaps I'll bring them up around about here. They took blood samples at the start before any treatment and then two weeks later to see where those cobalt levels started in these lambs and then where they ended up. If we go and have a look at the results from that, you can see that the cobalt levels in the willow group after 
they've been provided with access to the willow are significantly higher than when they started and also significantly higher than the control and the drench group. Here's a graph to show those results and there's a bit of an explanation underneath. If you want to read that, just pause because it's going to take you a minute or two. So this study was a really interesting demonstration of concept. We know from previous work that willow does indeed have very high levels of cobalt when you analyze it. As a vet, my next question would be, what do we do with that information? The experimental groups were pretty small. They weren't followed for a particularly long time. We didn't see how those cobalt levels hopefully eventually translated into live weight gains. So hopefully work like this encourages similar but bigger, more long-term studies looking at perhaps more commercially relevant data and of course it raises the practical questions if we try and implement it on farm how do you practically provide lambs with willow consistently throughout a year on different farms but i think the work's worth doing because if the last few years have demonstrated and continue to demonstrate anything to us is that using inputs that come from far away that take fuel to get them to us that have very fragile supply chains and so on it does leave us exposed when things go wrong. And any opportunity to insulate ourselves from that, that buzzword resilience, is probably a good and prudent thing to do. So hopefully off the back of this study, there'll be more and more work coming out about on-farm systems, both building that bank of evidence and giving us more experience on practical ways to implement these sorts of things on farm. If you want a deeper dive on the topic, there's a great webinar that came out, I think just last week. That's from Carbon Calling. So uh, Liz Genova, who's a sheep and beef consultant and Nick Renison, who's a farmer in Cumbria. Um, they have Nigel Kendall on the podcast as one of the guests. He is one of the authors of the study we're talking about, works at the University of Nottingham Vet School. Yes, the link to that is in the video description. You can download it on Spotify as well if you want to listen to it in the car like I do. Yeah, so that's it really, a sort of non-conventional look at how we can improve trace element status of lambs. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, there's more to come as always. If you did enjoy it, Go ahead, click subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and let me know. Do any of you feed trees to sheep or tree fodder to sheep or cattle? I'd be really interested to hear. Other than that, I'm going to continue with my walk and uh, put the camera away. See you next time.